Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosehill. This is my little tech corner of the internet, or at least on YouTube where I talk about tech. Today we're going to be talking again about optical media. I started this series of videos about optical media a couple of weeks ago in January 2024. I was doing my 2023 archiving. Usually when I go through my annual archiving, I try to learn a bit more or develop my approach a bit further. And this year I said I'd put that process all up on YouTube. So we talked about a lot of interesting things, I think, like uh, error correction code, parity data, uh, the different grades of archival grade optical media you can buy in January 2024. But one thing we did not talk about is the uh, attempts to get optical media out of the small capacity territory it currently finds itself in. Uh, optical media does retain importance for a couple of different reasons in this 2024. One of them is because it's relatively impervious to bit rot, at least certain types. And that's where we get into these very small details that are actually very important about, for instance, the difference between the HTL inorganic and LDH organic Blu-ray types. Mostly stuff's uh, HTL nowadays, but there was that attempt to uh, make Blu-ray organic media like uh, CDs and DVDs. We talked about uh, the archival grade CVDs and DVDs. We talked a lot about the M-Disc and those products can hold data for 100 to a few hundred years. Um, uh, M-Disc claim 1000. And I've made the point that really, I don't think there's any point in looking beyond the 100 year time frame and arguably even the 50 year time frame. Because if we look at the long history of digital data storage medium, all we really need is backwards compatibility and to get our keep our stuff safe for the time being and move it on to the next form. And I'm certain that there will be a next form coming after the uh, coming after these. By the way, Verbatim told me today that they plan, this was just one person at Verbatim, but he said, we envision continuing to make the M-Disc for at least another decade. So I don't think people have to be too worried about backwards compatibility. Um, so that's why I'm into optical media because for ar for archival offline storage, it does actually do a better job than essentially everything else currently on the market, including hard drives which store data via magnetism but tend to lose their magnetism after about five years. We have SSDs which are faster but store their data via electrical charge, which tells you that when they're left offline, not connected to power, they're at risk of losing that data potentially quicker than HDDs did. And LTO, which is commonly thought of as the king of archival. And the reason that LTO and tape is the king of archival actually has to do not with the fact that it's a very durable storage medium. In fact, if you think about other forms of tape storage like VHS, they're pretty bad at uh, data longevity. Tape is just the cheapest way we currently have of storing lots and lots of data. So per terabyte, it's the cheapest data form. But actually, the archival grade optical media products do a significantly better job at holding on to data offline in cold storage than LTO does. So what's the issue then with uh, with archival, with uh, optical media? Well, the capacity thing is a big problem. Limiting its use, limiting its, its widespread adoption between the small groups of people who really care about this stuff and who might, might be watching this video and onto the mass market where people are generally happy with the cloud and they don't feel the need to take their own uh, backup copies. So today we're going to be looking at uh, the attempts that have been made to try make this, to try to solve this problem. Looking at um, the biggest uh, optical media on the market today, but actually the quite interesting history of uh, attempts that have been already made in the past to get us past there. Okay, so firstly, the big spoiler alert is that yes, 128 gigabytes very specifically is the biggest optical media you can buy on the market to the best of my knowledge at the time I'm recording this video in January 29th, 2024. Now, I always say to the best of my knowledge, as far as I know, caveat, because I don't want to uh, give, I don't want to share misinformation, but it is extremely difficult for me to look at every piece of optical media in the market. But the biggest one I've personally come across is the Sony 128 gig discs. For 100 gigabytes, we have more manufacturers. But this doesn't mean that this is actually the, the top. Uh, these aren't actually even the biggest optical media discs that have been developed to date. So there's an interesting one from Folio Photonics. These are the guys claiming to, that they're going to bring out a one terabyte disc. 
I have tried without success to uh, to get in touch with them. I thought they might want to do an email, but I guess they're keeping a low key. Or my obscure YouTube channel with a few hundred subscribers isn't a very appealing uh, target, which I totally understand. Um, but they are, they've made a bit of noise about this and they are uh, uh, projecting a one terabyte that is going to cost three bucks by 2026, which is two years in the future, of course. Um, and they want to get that up to 10. Now, the problem is that these guys are going for the expensive drive model, which we've seen Sony attempt to do with their Sony Optical Archive product and archival disc that, as far as I can tell, has been quietly vanished from the from the world. Um, but um, so this is there these guys. And the, the, the reason that I highlight the price of the drive is that most consumers don't have four thousand dollars to buy on a drive. They don't have just as most consumers don't have. I don't know how, how much LTO drives cost. The last time I looked, all I knew is I couldn't afford one. You know, five thousand dollars, maybe good ones are 10K. I don't know. People into LTO can uh, can let me know. Uh, but that's the reason that it's that's actually a big advantage of optical for archival that LTO doesn't have. That your average person can probably don't want to speak for everyone. You know, has a hundred dollars to spend on a Blu-ray drive and uh, fifty dollars to spend on some M discs, one hundred and fifty bucks to get going. But they don't have necessarily five, six six K uh, to invest in in uh, in LTO. And we've already but we've already seen that LTO doesn't actually. I believe really makes sense for uh, long-term cold archival storage uh, because of the problems of storing data on tape. So if Folio Photonics bring this to market, it's going to be an enterprise product because of the price point. And they are, from what I can see, the best chance they have is bringing tape down. It's kind of crazy that tape is still the standard in, arc in the enterprise and optical isn't. But when you look at the capacities, it's totally understandable. So, as the, but looking at the past, so Ritech, who are kind of an Asian company known for making pretty cheap media, they actually, but they're still a significant manufacturing force. They showed off a 250 gig Blu-ray at CES in 2007. So it's actually kind of interesting. Back in 17 years ago, right? There was already there were already people making bigger Blu-rays than what we have today twice the size in fact but i don't know what happened to any of these projects they just kind of vanished pioneer actually did a 400 gig this is the biggest one i could find not the biggest one the biggest project or the biggest aspiration but the biggest disc that was prototyped and actually made and again i might be wrong about this um i think that sony might have made a one gigabyte one but pioneer for sure did one uh which was 16 layers at 25 gigs per layer and the coolest thing was that it was actually compatible with, you know, standard tech of the day in 2008. Um, TDK did a 200 gig one in 2019. So we've seen, we see that there, um, it's technically capable to to go beyond um, what we're current, what our current capacity constraint is, but that none of these products, all these products seem to die mysterious deaths. They seem to just kind of, there seems to be press releases and media coverage but then they vanish into the other. This is my little tech fr tech phrase you can quote me on. New tech is announced with great fanfare, but withdrawn in total silence. Um, so that's kind of the thing that I've just noticed is you see all these press releases and whatever, but then then when they then then they just kind of stops and at that and you you're left wondering well what happened to that idea. So here is the TDK. There are two hundred gig Blu-rays. As you can see, this was reported on. Uh, by media in 2019. Uh, here is the more impressive one uh, from Pioneer, a 16 layer 400 gig optical disc. Um, this was on a Taipei. I've made the point earlier today. I just bought I just bought some uh, 128 discs from Amazon Japan yesterday, um, and I made the point that Japan is kind of the world innovator in optical media. Uh, the first Blu-ray was made in Japan. Uh, Sony's based there. Uh, TDK is based there. Pioneer, if I'm as far as I'm aware, is also Japanese. So um, they have led the way, but not all the products have come to market. It seems so. Pioneer did this 400 gig optical disc, a uh, 16 layer one, and this made the news in uh, 2009. 
reputable media picked it up and this is a photo i found of it looks just like a regular blu-ray but uh apparently this thing could hold 400 gigs of data on it so then you have this kind of archival disc so this was so the the generations of optical media are generally taken to be gen 1 cd gen 2 dvd gen 3 blu-ray so we're currently kind of frozen at gen 3 um mdisc is kind of i mean basically it's it's blue it's blu-ray in terms of the uh laser used to write it so it's considered uh you know within the blu-ray generation let's say even though some people would argue that because it's got an inorganic layer that might be a lot different than htl that it's really its own thing but we haven't seen um a next generation and archival disc was this product from sony and panasonic that they were going to co-develop that they announced in 2014, they introduced. Then they did these um, these cartridges that were like, let's put some optical discs into a cartridge and we can, you know, really, really expand the media. You can see here they were kind of, this is their logo. They were forecasting uh, to get up to the one terabyte with the disc alone and the cartridges would be a multiple of that because you'd have multiple discs in a cartridge. But again, it just seems to have like vanished um this was their product roadmap from their white paper so you can see they were like okay we're at 300 gigs and with all these you know advances in technology we're going to get up to this one terabyte this fabled one terabyte mark um but i'm 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 more excited about what's on the market than what than what was talked about so sony ods optical archive discs which also by the way had a um projected lifespan of 100 years so they had archival um permanence there were their archival media as well um from and then you just find on forums oh this vanished this is discontinued it's uh b and h don't sell them anymore so yeah it's uh very odd um so just to kind of uh say just to show you guys what you can actually what did come to market because we talked we've talked about what's in the pipeline uh what people what was in the pipeline and kind of ended so what actually got there so it's basically just these two, uh, BDXL 100 gigs and BDXL 128 gigs. So it's actually a bit confusing because I always assumed that 100 gigs was quad layer Blu-ray uh, because if one layer is 25, two layers is 50, you'd assume that 100 gigs was four, but it's actually um, most 100 gig discs these days are actually tri triple layer. So that is triple layer of 33 gigs but there actually was a quad layer. The actual first uh, 100 gig BDR launched in 20, 2007 by Hayachi was actually quad layer 100 gigs, um, 25 times four. So the acronyms you'll see are in, in, in specs of readers, writers are uh, usually besides BDXL, which is a kind of, as far as I know, just a generic descriptor for Blu-ray discs beyond 100. Um, BDTL is Blu-ray triple layer and BDQL is Blu-ray quad layer, quad of course being four. So the biggest disc you can find is the one I ordered from Japan yesterday and um, I just ordered it because I felt like after doing all this research I should have at least one of one of each in my in my uh, in my family, in my optical media family. So uh, you can find these on Amazon.com. They're 128, not 125, 128 um gigs and it's that works out to be four layers of 32 uh each so the the amount of data they put on a layer the amount of layers really depends on the manufacturer um this i think is archival the i guess they don't read japanese i can't i can't tell uh, if the japanese ones i, I presume it's, a, it's the same product 100 gig Blu-rays are not that rare anymore. Um, I did a video yesterday about Amazon Japan. It's a place you would never think to check. I didn't even know Amazon had a Japanese marketplace until a few days ago. But they actually have a surprisingly vibrant uh, optical media world. And I said earlier today that actually makes a lot of sense because the Japanese were the innovators, have been the innovators historically in the optical media space. And you'll also see there are actually a lot of manufacturers like Panasonic and JVC that you don't see so much anymore on the Western markets, but they're still going strong, selling into Japan and maybe elsewhere in Asia. 
So within 100 gigs, there is a Blu-ray. There is sorry, there is an M disc in 100 gigs. Um, I don't think verbatim make a. Oh, they do actually. They they make a non M disc regular inorganic HDL 100 gig a BDXL. Ritek make one. Panasonic make one. Again, I don't read Japanese, so I don't know if this product packaging says because it's nice and gold. It might be an archival grade one. If you do know Japanese, please let me and us know. Um, here is uh, the quad layer 128 one on amazon.com and uh, here are the uh, I like these a lot better the uh, the Japanese product packaging Sony is HQ'd in Japan so the ones I, I bought I bought myself a 10 pack of the of these as you can see um, actually I have no idea what really what I'm looking at too much because of the of the language gap, but um, I, I I checked out that they supposedly work on. There's no problem with uh, burnable media working on, you know, and it it makes sense because Pioneer is a Japanese company, so it's all actually all the all the kind of higher end blank media and drives are probably all coming from Japan. Um, so yeah, they make these in a 25 spindle. If I'm not mistaken, this 25 spindle of 128 gig Sony BDXL, uh, Blu-rays is actually the biggest single, biggest capacity single, uh, optical media product you, you can buy today on the market, um, because it's a bigger size. So then in terms of drive, compat- drive compatibility, and by the way, I haven't yet seen someone else making 128 gigs. Um, it's a, it's kind of weird that Sony went for this 32 per layer thing. So it seems to be very much their proprietary um, attempt at this. Um, but uh, anyway, that's on the, that that is something you can buy today from Amazon.com or Amazon Japan, and I'm sure other places as well stock those discs. So in terms of the drive compatibility, so this is the one I got lately, the Pioneer BDR XD0808. So just read your spec sheet. And uh, you can see here, I've just highlighted on my spec sheet where it says, see here, BDRTLQL. So that is BD, BDR Media, triple and quad layer. The max write speed is four. Um, the max read speed is four also. And then they've got the BD Blu-ray triple layer. Um, my my brain is a little bit fried after... <laughs> Uh, after putting together this presentation, uh, TL, oh yeah, that's because the 100 gig uh, M discs are actually triple layer of 33 times three. So anyway, check your spec and then you call, You of course have to check your burning software. It should be capable if it can do Blu-ray. So I would say the most important thing is to check your that your writer uh, can write onto a four layer or three layer Blu-ray media. But so where do we stand against the other storage so we talked about the fact that 128 gigs is like the max so the biggest um, hard drive came to market uh, this month from seagate they released a 30 terabyte hard drive so if i've got my math right that would be 234 of these discs so um and then in lto it's crazy uh again i'm by no means an lto expert so this is just stuff i pulled off google to see what are the kind of big capacities like in lto so IBM have these uh, 50 terabyte uh, tape drives and it expands to like 150 terabytes of capacity. So basically the, 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 the summary of it is that we're nowhere even close to, uh, to tape in optical, even, even these kind of big ones. So, um, but I, I still suggest that when, you know, 128 gigs for a lot of people, for especially for video folk and photographers, is going to give them a lot of capacity and it remains useful. But that is where we are in terms of big Blu-ray, to the best of my knowledge, at the time of recording this video. Hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching. And if you want to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.